Okay, so let's dive into some fundamental programming concepts in this lecture, and we'll talk about the variables, uh, constants, and vectors. And constants, yeah, that's just gonna be touched uh, briefly. We'll just start with what we had in the previous lectures, and we'll create this uh, start function that we did before. Uh, actually, for this lecture, that may not be really required but let's be consistent and do that um, what we will do is now just for simplicity uh, we will create a three-dimensional grid ground so that it would be easier to read the geometry that we place in space and points are quite hard to read because they are well uh, you know they are in 3d space but they are sort of a very simple entity and it's sometimes hard to understand where the point exists in space if you don't have some sort of uh, context for it. So let's create that context. And uh, in bit by bit, you can create a grid by just doing this. So bit by bit, draw, draw grid mesh. And then we can create these options for the grid like that. So uh, we'll do constant grid options. And we'll instantiate... Uh, the grid options as we did other things in previous lectures and we'll just hit play and now you see that we have a three-dimensional grid ground on our 3d environment after we swap the canvas so now we are back in the editor and we see our grid in the background this just is helpful you'll see uh, immediately why so what I will do now is something that maybe we did already in the previous lecture, but uh, I'll just create a constant called vector and I'll do this. So I'll open up the square bracket and I'll just type 0, 0, 0 to it, separated by commas. So what I've just created is an array, this symbol. Uh, marks the start of the array and this symbol the end of it and the array is basically just a list of items in JavaScript or TypeScript so both can hold any kind of things in the array and in this case we hold three numbers so zero 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 these in bit by bit mark the three-dimensional point basically it's uh, on the start of the coordinate system and it's just a sort of simple structure so first number marks the x coordinate uh, second number y coordinate and third number marks z coordinate and vector itself is just a constant so we'll show you how to now draw this point in space and let's do that through our very well known function that you saw before already. Draw and draw an async. And in this case, we'll say entity is a vector. So these few lines is something that you probably now understand. And we hit play. And you see this small red dot on your grid. If it's not very visible for you, uh, we'll create the options uh, for the draw method. And we'll do it like that. So you see that the options can get the basic geometry options and points and lines and polylines can use those uh, to just change, for example, the size of a point or the width of the line. And what we will do is we'll say we create a draw options and we'll create instantiate the options like we did before. And we'll pass those options here like that. Don't worry now about this notation. This is a JSON object notation. And yeah, we'll talk about it in later tutorials. For now, we do discuss the arrays. And this is a simple array that we've defined with three items. So let's create the, the size that is 40. And let's hit play. So now you see that the point became larger. It's still on zero, zero, zero uh, space. So we can change that by just changing the Y 
item in this array. So this will be uh, one unit higher than it is now because the y uh, vector marks up direction in space in bit by bit as in many other game engines but sometimes you see that the z is marked as an up direction and in this case uh, y is marked as an up direction so now if i move around you see that the point is hanging a bit higher in space i can change it to 10 for example and now it's somewhere really high um, you see it here so that's quite cool. Okay, so we've created the point now, a vector. We visualized it. We can also change its color. Um, we can do it with this hexadecimal notation that I, I'm not gonna explain now, but you'll see um, what it does later. Hmm. This is ah colors okay so with you so this is a bit of a mistake on my side you see that the TypeScript was helpful here so it just knows that this property doesn't exist and colors does exist so now if I hit run you'll see that the point has changed the color to this uh, purple I guess and yeah so this the options drives how the points are being drawn on the screen you can also change other coordinates if you're into that so now your point is a bit further away from the zero and just to create another vector so let's call this one vector one and let's have the other one vector two and let's put that now on the zero and let's create this draw again and let's click run okay so now we visualize two points separately and one is on the zero and the other is on the one 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 and that's pretty pretty simple uh, what you can also do in TypeScript and JavaScript you can say and in bit by bit of course you can have multiple points as an entity so this is simpler because you then you don't need to um, call this method two times for each point that you draw and this is also in fact uh, much faster because it creates a group of points to visualize on the GPU level and that's just much uh, better so uh, if you can just do it like this and now you see still two points uh, on the canvas if you click run also what's nice if you change those options both points update so if you make the point white it's becoming white um, yeah so these are vectors and of course in mathematics a vector can be arbitrarily length uh, vector <laughs> it's not necessarily three-dimensional vector um, arrays can hold many items in TypeScript and JavaScript so you could continue here and say let's have this and this uh, but yeah, nothing would happen. The error would be uh, given this doesn't work in bit by bit. You cannot visualize that. So basically we have to come back and just uh, do it like that. Okay, so now we discussed arrays and that's quite a complex thing. Uh, array can hold uh, not only numbers, but it can also hold text. So you can do things like that. You see that it's perfectly legal. And it is legal in a certain way just because we said that the vector doesn't have a type you could say that vector must be a number array and then suddenly this item doesn't belong here and that's nice of TypeScript to understand what kind of uh, type the vector 2 is but for our purposes we now just to demonstrate we show that it is possible to add dada to vector 2 it's not gonna produce anything good of course but it's possible so um, yeah for the lists and the arrays this is the way to go in bit by bit uh, in and in typescript and now i'll show you how to create variables so variable is a thing that of course it's in the name right so it varies in time um, and what we will do is just let's create three variables and we mark them with this word let so we initialize them and we assign values immediately we say that they are 0 
0, 0, x, y, and z. So now what we can do is we can say x, y, and z, and we can use them here as well. Only problem is that now our vectors are on top of each other. That means that they're in the same location, and if we click play, you see that they are exactly in the same spot, and they look like a one point instead of two points. What's nice about variables is that because they are flexible, you can say things like, let's change y to 2, and let's change z to 1, for example. So this makes it possible to adapt your coordinates just by reassigning values later in your code. And that's perfectly legal if you run the code now. You see that the first vector is now on the 0, 0, 0, and the second point is on the y2 and z1. So you see that it's two units up and one unit uh, towards the z direction. And if you want to change z to minus 1, that's also fine. You can do that can also do y to minus 2, then it goes under the grid. So this is why grid is also helpful, right? So you see it better, basically. And we can make those points just a little bit bigger. And let's maybe make them again with that purple color. Okay, so variable is a thing that varies. Um, you create the variable by saying uh, let x exist and assign it a value of 0 with this equal sign. You can also do this, uh, and var is also uh, an indication of a variable, but the preferred way in TypeScript is to use let notation. Yeah, there are some also practical differences that I'm not going to discuss now, but a let is a way to describe a variable. Const, on the other hand, means that you're creating a constant. If I would say that y is a constant, you'll see here that I get an error, and it says cannot assign to y because it is a constant. Constant prevents you to change things uh, as you go, as you program, and that's quite safe because sometimes you really don't want things to change in time. Uh, sometimes you do, and when you do, then the variables are handy, but basically a standard that I use, I always start with constant. If I initialize something, I'll just create a constant. And if I later on in the code understand that I will need to update this variable, then I create that with let. So I sort of relax the code to be more, um, to allow for more things to happen to it. But basically this is less safe then, right? So that means that somewhere in the code, per accident, the value of that variable can change. You can reassign it to something else, so you don't necessarily know exactly what is going on. So constant is a preferred way to do it, and then uh, variables help you out in cases where you really need to reassign things. And in this case, it's quite nice to have it um, like this. It's easier to read the code. You know that it's x, y, and z, and you pass those into arrays, and yeah, you just update it like that by changing its values from 0 to minus 2. So you, if you delete this, you can see that it just takes the z that is original and y that is minus 2. So now they are in the same vertical line. Okay, so we discussed arrays. Uh, we discussed, well, arrays are collections, right? We discussed constants, variables, and a few other things along the way. Uh, you see the arrays in other places, like it's a collection of two vectors here that we pass into the entity. You have to begin understanding uh, that, okay, opening a square bracket um, marks the beginning of the array notation. Uh, you can create arrays with different kind of uh, methods, but this is the most easy, uh, easy to understand, I think. It's visible. Uh, you have a sort of container here that's even visual and you put things into it, separate those things with commas and in that way you create lists. So yeah, 
let's uh, move on. It's enough for this lecture and let's see each other in the next one. Cheers.